election for council last year. And uh, to see this result really fills my heart and the community. It's a place I've grown up since 1988, 35 years. Um, got my first shot at teaching here. Served the community <coughs> during a time of reform at the TDSB, eight years, and proud of the work I had with my colleagues. And now to bring that same strong voice and a clear vision for our ward in our city at a time where we're starting a new chapter. And I'm looking forward to working with the mayor, Mayor Olivia Chow, and the people of Scarborough Southwest at a very unique time have given and have called for a practical, progressive option that looks at the challenges and makes sensible, smart solutions that work with the contours of a unique ward that in a way is a microcosm of the city. And as we see the challenges before us, I heard over tens of thousands of doors of facing the challenges of traffic and congestion and something in Scarborough we've seen the need, the desire, the demand to have the former Scarborough RT resurfaced and paved into an express busway. The red bus lanes in Kennedy and Midland have been creating a challenge and ensuring that we place the interests of bus riders and drivers at the center of good transport decisions is something the city and our ward was seeking. We're proud of the fiscal framework that the city and the province have agreed to very recently. I'm excited to get dive deep into the budget deliberations for three years. I was the chair of the budget at Toronto District School Board, a $3 billion organization. And now with the freedom or the capacity for more, I'm excited to work with the mayor to bring in new daycare. The data is clear. Scarborough is underserved in so many different capacities, whether it's daycare sites, transit, infrastructure, community centers. And with this fiscal framework, I'm excited to join other councillors from Scarborough and the city to place emphasis on need, not voice. The data is clear where the city is underserved, and this is what I'm looking to bring to City Hall, a strong voice to advocate for that disparity and to bring a sensible lens to all decision making. So I'm grateful for everyone here. Uh, it was a three month odyssey almost, and we saw a host of issues and incidents that have brought light to the importance of good public governance. And it's something we saw very recently, and it's something that we all cherish in the city of Toronto and as a country, a free, fair election with ensuring democratic principles. So I'm uh, thankful and grateful for all the other 22 competitors in this unique by-election for bringing their voice forward, and I'm going to be reaching out to each and every one of them to hear their thoughts, incorporate their beliefs and ideas into the work I do and is to the city. Municipal governments, governance is fascinating. We're not representatives of a party, we're representatives of the people. I'm going to work with my other uh, uh, candidates as well as our diverse community to ensure the interests, our, our interests and the community's interests are placed uh, at uh, front and center at City Hall. I'm again very grateful to everyone here in the room. It's uh, public service is dear to me. It's my fifth municipal election uh, and uh, it's something I will cherish and I hope uh, to make everyone proud and to uh, I really live up to that faith and trust so is. many have placed uh, in me. So thank you everyone. I thank all the other uh, candidates and their teams. It was a grueling election, two in a span of 12 months. So uh, I think our families all, they, their families certainly are looking forward to um, having more time with them, and I'm certainly looking forward to spending more time with my wife on you, my little baby Adia, who is not here right now, so, and, and all my friends and family, but, uh, you know, we, 
rest tonight.